no other mediator, not Mary, not the Pope, nobody, not no political system, not this Babylonian system, not any Caesar, not any president, but there's one mediator, the Lord Jesus Christ, who gave himself a ransom for all to be testified in due time. So, we have the God-man, he stepped down from God's glory, and he gave himself and he paid the price. Now that it's finished, now that it's done, now that the thousand year kingdom is done, and he has put down all rule, and he's, um, he's conquered death completely, the curse is lifted off the earth, there's no more death, and we come into the new heavens and the new earth, when all things, verse 28, are subdued unto him, then shall the Son also himself be subject unto him, unto the Father, that put all things under him, that God may be all in all. So the Father now lifts up and gives everything unto the Father, and now as a new creation that never existed before the God-man, and we with him uh, for all eternity, praise his holy name. So Christ is now back onto the Father, subject onto the Father again. Isn't, isn't that beautiful, saints? And then we come to this scripture that's a little difficult. Verse 29, Else what shall they do which are baptized for the dead, if the dead rise not at all? Why are they baptized for the dead? You know, the Mormons have a whole file system, a whole record they keep for people that are di died, the Latter-day Saints, the people that have died, they didn't get baptized, they get baptized for the dead. Well, that's, uh, you know, that's nice, but it ain't going to do them any good unless they were born again before they died, amen? Now, here's the thing, if we go to, uh, oh, let's see, let's go to, uh, I think this is what it's talking about, Romans chapter 6. Let's go to Romans chapter 6, and we see here, he says, Know ye not, in verse 3, that so many of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ were baptized into his death. Therefore we are buried with him with, him, with baptism into death, like as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we should also walk in the newness of life. Even so, we should walk in the newness of life. If we've been planted together in the likeness of his death, so we shall also be in the likeness of his resurrection. So it seems to me that this is what he is talking about. People have different ideas of what exactly this means, but uh, uh, I can't see them baptizing somebody standing in your place you already died and someone goes and gets baptized it's like it's supposed to count for you i don't believe that's what it means so when he says what shall we do uh or else what shall we do you know for them which are baptized for the dead if the dead rise not at all well um we're, the moment we trust christ by one spirit we're all baptized into one body amen and right there we're born again so i think that's what that's talking about and he goes on to say, and why stand we in jeopardy every hour? Verse 30. So he's arguing about the resurrection. I protest your rejoicing which I have in Christ Jesus. I die daily. If after the manner of men I fought with beasts at Ephesus, he either fought with people he called beasts or maybe he got thrown with beasts, I don't know. What advantage did it me if the dead rise not, let us eat and drink for tomorrow we die. You know, I remember reading uh, about when, uh, when Germany was about to be bombed by the Americans and the Russians at the end of the war, and, the, and uh, Germany knew that they lost the war, that people got up on their roof, rooftops and started drinking and partying while the uh, Allies came and bombed uh, Germany. In other, in other words, you know, eat and drink for tomorrow we die. See, this is the hope of them that don't have Christ. Have a party until you die, because what else is there? Uh, but we have a great hope, praise the Lord, a sure anchor to our soul, even the resurrection of the dead, the Lord Jesus Christ, hallelujah. 
So, uh, verse 33, be not deceived, evil communications corrupt good manners. He says, awake to righteousness and sin not, for some have not the knowledge of God. I speak this to your shame. It appears in the Corinthian church, you know, these Greek philosophers and these intellectuals, some of them like the Pharisees who were the Sadducees, and the, the Pharisees believed in the resurrection of the dead and they believed in angels, but the Sadducees did not believe in any of that. They're like materialists that are today, like communists, people who don't believe. So he tells them to wake up, verse 35, but some men will say, how are the dead raised up and in what body do they come? Thou fool, that which thou sowest is not quickened, is not made alive, except it die. The seed is planted, it dies, and it must grow. I believe that is, um, let's see, is that um, John chapter 12? Let's look it up. John chapter 12. Is that the Passover here? And let's see if, we, if this is it or not. If not, we'll just have to, you have to take my word for it. <laughs> ah, here we go. Uh, John 12, 24. Verily, verily, or truly, truly, I say unto you, except a corn of wheat fall into the ground and die, it abideth alone. But if it die, it bringeth forth much fruit. And then he applies it to uh, our eternal life. He that loveth his life shall lose it, and he that hated his life in this world shall keep it unto eternal life. So praise the Lord. So we see that in nature, the seed is planted in the ground. It's got to die before it starts growing to bring out fruit. So we also are, are, are buried with, him, it, with baptism into death. And we also will bring forth fruit. It's going to be a glorified body. And now it's important how we live life. Because he that loveth his life shall lose it. And he that hated his life in this world shall keep it out to eternal life. I don't know about you, saints, but the longer I live in this world, the less I, uh, less I care for it. You know, when you're young and you want to experience life, that's one thing. But when you start tasting this life and see it for what it is and all the death and sickness and wars and hatred, you know, I hate this life and I, and I hate this world. When I, when I see the glory of God and the things that are coming, that's what I want to live for in this world. I hope you do also, saints. So he says in verse 37, And that body which you sowest, thou sowest not that body that shall be but bare grain, like he said in John 12, it may chance of wheat or some other grain, but God given it a body as it has pleased him, and to every man and to every seed his own body. Um, all flesh is not the same flesh. There's one kind of flesh of men, another flesh of beasts, another of fishes and another of birds. Well, that, that's obvious. There's different kinds, like when God made the animals, he made them according to his kind, and they have different flesh. Now, verse 40. There is also celestial bodies, heavenly, and terrestrial bodies, <coughs> but the glory of the celestial is one, and the glory of the celestial of the terrestrial, the earthly, is another. There is one glory of the sun, another glory of the moon, and another glory of the stars. Uh, for one star different from another in glory. That word glory, it's like the word glow, G-L-O-W. How bright does it glow? When Christ transfigured himself in front of his uh, apostles, there was such a, it was so bright like the sun at noontime, it says. Such a great glory. And now, this is what's, what's coming for us. Verse 42. So also is the resurrection of the dead. It is sown in corruption. It decays. The, the worms eat us. We're dead. 
and is raised in incorruption. Hallelujah. It's sown in dishonor and shame. It is raised in, in glory. It is sown in weakness. It is raised in power. It is sown a natural body. It's raised a spiritual body. There's a natural body and there is a spiritual body. And so it is written, the first Adam was made a living soul, and the last Adam was made a quickening spirit. I'm going to end with this, saints. Your rewards at the coming of Christ and the first resurrection will be your glory. It'll be the white robes that are going to be shining. And the brighter it shines, the greater is your rewards. The greater you gave, the, the more you gave up this life. And, and live for Jesus. The more you fought the, and ran, and ran the course, and uh, you fought the good fight of faith, you obtained the crown of righteousness. Amen? The, and you've done this, man. You've crucified the flesh. You may have sinned, but you confessed that sin to the Lord. First John 1 John 1.9, you got up and you, and you, and you keep going, and, and you run the race set before you, you will be given these robes and these crowns and you will shine like Jesus did. Now others that built upon the foundation of 1 Corinthians chapter 3 instead of gold, silver and precious stones so when they go through the trials and fires of life when they stand in front of Jesus with his gaze, with his look upon us we shall pass because those things are purified gold, silver, and precious stones when the judgment's applied. But for them that built, have built with stubble and hay and wood. In other words, you were worldly. You were uh, carnal. Uh, this life meant more to you or just as much. You, you weren't real serious. You didn't really run the race like you should have. You didn't, you, you didn't fight the good fight of faith. You're mediocre Christians. Well, your, your white robes, your rewards, your crowns are not going to be so great and you're not going to glow, glory that much. And you will not glorify God like you could have in all these things. Saints, let's end with prayer. Father, I just pray that we understand the, the gravity of this, the seriousness of this, Lord, that we're dealing here with eternity, Lord. Why not? give up this life and, and the sin and everything in it and just run this race and give it everything we got Lord that we will glorify you because that's it it's that we don't do this for just a selfish reason we respect we honor the fact that you want us to be in glory with you and that you want to give us great rewards for all eternity and our glory Lord should be great and shining like yours but we do this Lord most of all because you loved us and you gave your life for us. No greater life can a man have for his brethren than he lay down his life for his friends. Hallelujah. So Father, we just ask you, Father, wake up the saints that aren't living for you. Bring many, many unto you to give you glory and honor. And we thank you, Father. In the precious name of Jesus, we pray. Hallelujah. Amen. I love you, saints, and the Lord loves you. God bless.